Welcome back to Tech Time. This video is going to be specifically on the Titman Cyclone feed system, in case you need to clean it or take it apart to fix or replace anything inside. To see my previous Tech Time on the Titman A5, see the description below for a link. A quick bit of history, the precursor to the Cyclone can be found on the Titman FA or Factory Automatic. However, this older system is powered by spring, unlike the modern Cyclone feed system, that was first seen in the Tipman A5, which is powered by excess gas from the operation of the marker. The cyclone will stop feeding once the air tank you're using no longer has enough PSI to operate. Luckily, the cyclone has a manual feed button, should this ever happen, for a few extra shots in a pinch. The Tipman X7, X7 Phenom, and even the Tipman 98 have cyclone feed systems available for them, and this video should be relevant to any of them. The differences between all three of them are pretty minute, just minor tweaks here and there, so... Pretty much everything else is the same. Uh, for this job, we are going to need an Allen key to remove the 3 16th screw, a small Phillips screwdriver, some paper towel, and Q-tips like usual, and uh, some grease-based lu lubricant, ideally. Okay, to start, we are going to remove the 3 16 holding the Cyclone on the A5, and then disconnect the air hose from the nipple on the Cyclone. It can easily be pulled off the bango, just do not pull it off at an angle, as this may damage the hose or the nipple. Now we are free to work on the Cyclone, free from the A5. First we will get our small Phillips screwdriver and remove the number 8 screw with washer directly on top of the upper sprocket, or paddle as many people call it. And now you can slide the upper and lower sprockets out of the Cyclone and clean any dirt or paint that may have accumulated in the feeder housing. Apply a small amount of grease under where the lower sprocket sits. Now it is time to flip the cyclone over and remove the additional number 8 screws from the feeder bottom plate. Once all four are out, carefully remove the bottom plate. Inside here are the guts of the cyclone. As you can see, it would operate by having air come through the bango air fitting, which pushes the piston forward and ratchets the mechanism which, as stated before, can also be done manually unless there has been another failure with parts inside, which has been known to happen with the stock plastic parts, but this is mostly only reported during winter play. Now we are going to remove the cylinder, but be aware of the cylinder plug as there is a spring behind it. I recommend placing your finger at the exposed end of the cylinder over the lip so you can prevent the cylinder plug from springing out when you lift it out as shown. If you are here to replace the ratchet or feeder axle, you can easily remove the feeder axle by pulling it out of the ratchet. Putting it back in or installing a new one can be tricky, as the ratchet spring guide will pop out of the ratchet when the axle is removed. To put the feeder axle back in, use a small allen key to press the spring guide in as you insert the feeder axle into the ratchet with the flat end of the axle facing towards the spring guide, and voila! Alright, now unless you have anything else to do in here, you can clean any dirt or paint off the piston assembly, and then finally lubricate it. Now it's time to put it all back into the cylinder. After that, we need to reattach the cylinder to the feeder housing. And as with when we took it off, use your thumb to restrain the cylinder plug inside of the cylinder, and then put it into the feeder housing, being careful not to let the cylinder plug be pushed out by the spring. If done right, the cylinder will sit snugly. Repre replace the, the number 11 ratchet spring if you removed it before, uh, and then uh, replace the bottom plate back onto the cyclone, and replace all four of the number 8 screws. Next, replace the lower sprocket onto the feeder axle on the other side, and then replace the upper sprocket on top and reinstall the final number 8 screw with washer. Be sure to manually cycle the cyclone a few times to ensure you have done everything correctly. If it is ratcheting, you are in the clear. Finally, we are going to reconnect the bango fitting to the nipple hose, and then make sure the cyclone fits back onto the marker and finish up by replacing the 316 screw, and we are done like dinner. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope this helped someone out there. My next video will be a tech time on an ION, and then I will go uh, be gone on vacation for the holidays. I'll try to get some footage while I'm away, maybe an annual snowman hunt, who knows. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank Milsig for sending in the Marksman barrel for testing, and uh, it was pictured with the A5 today. A link to their website can be found in the description of this video, and other than that, just take care and stay safe, everyone.